Hello, this is the day that the Lord has made. Happy that you're here with us. This is Truth Outreach, a program that compares the teachings of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or they're more commonly known as the Mormons, to Christianity. We do a comparison between Mormonism and Christianity, and we're happy that you are here. And of course, always when we do this comparison, always, 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 the baseline for our comparison is the good old B-I-B-L-E basic instruction before leaving earth. The Bible. The Bible. There you go. <laughs> I'm Rocky Hulson, this lovely lady on my right who just chimed in there is my, uh, is my beautiful wife, Helen. Welcome. We're the founding uh, directors of Mormon uh, Missions, Midwest Outreach, which is our, the name of our ministry. And of course, the name of this program is Truth Outreach. Now, we like to open our program with two quotes. One from Brigham Young, and also a second quote by his first counselor, whose name was George A. Smith. We believe that these quotes justify what we do. The first quote from Brigham Young says, I say to the whole world, receive the truth, no matter who presents it to you. Take up the Bible, compare the religion of the Latter-day Saints with it, and see if it will stand the test. Now, his first counselor, who was the second highest leader of the Mormon Church at that time, George A. Smith, said, if a faith will not bear to be investigated, if its preachers and professors are afraid to have it examined, their foundation must be very weak. So we believe that those quotes by Mormon leaders uh, literally challenge us or give us license to do this program. Absolutely. So we're not, we're not going against Brigham Young. We're doing exactly what he said to do. And his first counselor said, hey, come on. You yeah, know, anyone wants- that can't stand to be examined, their foundation must be very weak. So... That's what we're doing. Now, the title of today's program is God, Mormonism versus Christianity, an overview, uh, part one. This is going to be a two-part. So today's going to be part one. Next week's going to be part two. Mm -hmm. But we're going to do a comparison between, just like we said at the opening, comparing the teachings of Mormonism on God, who God is, and the teachings of Christianity who God is. We're just going to lay it out there. Mm-hmm. Okay? And there's a big difference. And there's between, a huge difference, right. which you're just about to see. Right. Huge um, difference. The mantra that we hear from the Mormon church is that, you know, hey, we're Christians just like you. That's mm-hmm. what they say over and over and over again. Hey, we're Christians just like you. Why? The name of Jesus Christ is in the name of our church. It's right there. That's right. And, you know, is there any validity to that claim? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. not. There's not. Okay. Uh, and we, we acknowledge that Mormonism is a religion. Yes, oh, yes. We do. They're a religion. And, and also that they, you know, this is America, this United States, they have every right to, to, uh, to practice their religion however they like within the laws of the land. Right. Okay? So, so we're not, you we're know... We're not finding fault with they're that. They're not finding fault in that. What, what we have a problem with is when they say, hey, we're Christian just like the Christian church. Because no. mm-hmm. that's not so. Mm-hmm. It's not. Now, the boast... The boast... <laughs> The most basic, <laughs> and get that out in a minute, the most basic teaching of Christianity uh, is who God is, a belief in, in, in God and who God is. So I'm going to put up on the screen for you now what you're going to see here. There's going to be, it's going to be four slides, one right after another. It's a split screen. On the left-hand side of your screen is going to be the teachings of Mormonism about God. And on the right-hand side of the screen is going to be the Christian teaching. Okay, so I'm going to put it up on the screen for you now. Now, what you see there on the left-hand side, it says the Mormon concept of deity, pagan polytheism. Okay, and on the right-hand side, it says Christian, which is biblical. The concept of deity is monotheism. Now, that very first one underneath those labels, on the left-hand side, it says the gods are many, polytheistic. Poly means many, theistic God. Mormonism believes in many gods. They are polytheistic. Let's go to the right-hand side of the screen. What does Christianity say? God is one. Monotheistic. Mono is one, theistic God. Christianity is monotheistic. Mormonism is polytheistic. Back to the left-hand side of the screen, okay? The gods are, this is Mormonism, the gods are evolving. They're changing, or it's called mutable, okay? That's the term, uh, ecclesiastic term, mutable. Right-hand side of the screen, what does Christianity teach? God is immutable. God is unchanging, never changes. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. All right, now let's look at the last item there. 
Um, on the left-hand side of the screen for Mormonism. The, Mormonism believes that gods are, and I say gods because they believe in multiple gods, are material. On the right-hand side of the screen, Christianity. God is immaterial or spirit. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so the next slide is, on the left-hand side, Mormonism, the gods are sexual. Uh, they, are, they are physically procreating uh, divine spirit children. On the right-hand side of the screen, Christianity says that God is asexual, having no literal descendants. God created, okay? Let's go back to the left-hand side. Mormonism teaches the gods are polygamous, taking wives and husbands. On the right hand, what, is, what does Christianity teach? That God is celibate, unmarried. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Now, the next slide says, on the left-hand side, Mormonism teaches that God was, was mortal. He was once mortal. On the right-hand side, Christianity teaches that, that God is immortal. Back to the left-hand side. Mormonism teaches that God is progressive. On the right-hand side, Christianity teaches that God is omniscient, okay? That, he's, that he does not change. To the left-hand side, Mormonism teaches tritheism, that there are three gods respective to this earth. On the right-hand side, and I see my, my slide's a little messed up there, <laughs> that says Trinity. The Mormon, or Christianity teaches the Trinity, one God. And, you know, and if you look to the left there, it says triism, three gods. Mormonism teaches tritheism. Christianity teaches Trinity. Back to the left-hand side. Okay? Um, Mormonism teaches that God is an exalted man. On the right-hand side, what does Christianity teach? That God is deity. He's God. Back to the left, Mormonism teaches that God was incestuous. On the right hand, what does Christianity teach? That God is honorable. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, on the left hand side we have again Mormonism. What does Mormonism teach? That teaches that, that there is a heavenly mother. On the right hand side, what does Christianity teach? That God is celibate, he's not married. The left hand side, Mormonism, Adam, God. Mormonism taught several of the teachings back in early Mormonism was that Adam is God. What does Christianity always have taught on the right hand side? That God the Father is in fact God. Let's go back to the left. Mormonism, in early Mormonism with this Adam God teaching, they taught that Jesus was begotten by Adam, that Adam came and sired Jesus. That's, a, that's unbelievable, but that's Splash their teaching. <laughs> Let's go to the right-hand side. What does the Bible teach? It teaches that Jesus was begotten by the Holy Spirit and Christianity believes in the virgin birth. Mormonism does not. Back to the left. Mormonism teaches that Jesus was married. He was polygamist. He had polygamist marriages. What does the Bible teach? That Jesus was celibate. There's nothing that teaches anything in the Bible about Jesus being married. Back to the left. Mormonism teaches that Jesus, or that God, is space-limited. What does Christianity teach on the right? That God is omnipresent, everywhere present at the same time. Okay, wow. Now, that's a pretty vivid layout, okay? There's a huge, huge, huge difference between the Mormon teachings and the teachings of Christianity. And that's why we take exception to them saying, oh, but we're Christian just like you. How can you say you're Christian when we just laid out all of those items there? That they teach and believe that today. That they teach today. We're not talking well, about the 1800s. We're talking about 2003. Well, they would argue about the Adam God thing today, but it's still there. But, it's easy to prove. Right, okay. Right. But, but that's the teachings of Mormonism compared to Christianity. Right. Boy, it's just, it's incredible. Now... When the Mormon church calls itself Christian, it's being deceptive in, in that statement. We've looked at, the, there's 15 points that we had up there, okay? We've looked at those 15 points where Mormonism and Christianity completely disagree on the character or characteristics of God. Now, as always, okay, on this program, Truth Outreach, we document everything that we say. 
So I've got a bunch of material to cover, so we're just going to start rolling here. We're going to start getting Hopefully the Hopefully they have their tapes in. <laughs> yeah, I hope you got your tape in right fast you, with your pencil, because you every one of those I'm going to give you documentation of. Contact and you can get them. <laughs> Absolutely. Point number one, polytheism versus mon monotheism. Mormonism believes, okay, they, they are polytheistic. Joseph Smith taught this. I will preach on the plurality of gods. I have selected this text for that purpose. I wish to declare, I have always and in all congregations when I have preached on the subject of the deity, it has been the plurality of gods. Hello, that's Joseph Smith. The founder he taught of the that. church. You know, he's the founding prophet. He taught pl pluralistic, plurality of gods, poly, many, theism, God. They are polytheistic. Okay? What does the Bible say? All right? Clear as, clear as a bell. Isaiah 43.10. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. Hello? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Christianity is monotheistic. There is only one God. There are none others. Right. Okay? And we, and we just showed the exact opposite of that in Mormonism. Joseph Smith taught of the plurality of gods. That is not what the Bible teaches. That is not Christian. The Mormon teaching is, in fact, anti-Christian. Okay? So, uh, the name of this program is Truth Outreach. And so, to be absolutely accurate... Um, uh, more, uh, uh, accurate that Mormonism is, is more completely described. We've been saying that they're polytheistic, but the, actually the, the most correct teaching about the Mormon church is that they are henotheistic. Now, this is a strange term, but uh, and henotheistic believes it's, it's a form of polytheism uh, which revolves around a central God among many gods, and that's up on the screen. Technically, Mormon theology is henotheistic a form of polytheism which stresses a central deity. In Mormonism, the central deity is Elohim, whom Mormons call God the Father. But henotheism also accepts other deities. In Mormonism, the other deities accepted include Jesus, who is a separate God, the Holy Ghost, who is a separate God, and endless other gods who were once men and have now evolved into godhood. Even the Encyclopedia Britannica classifies Mormonism as polytheistic. So, they are polytheistic believing in many gods, but a subset of polytheism is this term henotheistic, which means they believe in a central deity amongst a whole bunch of other deities. Well, it's very pagan. Yeah, it is pagan. Okay, pagan. so let's look at the second point that we had, uh, and that is mutable versus immutable. Mormonism believes in a God who is mutable or changing. Christianity believes in a God that is immutable, unchanging. Mormonism teaches that Elohim, the supreme God in their henotheistic view, was once a man and then evolved to become a God. So I'm going to put that up for you. This is Joseph Smith's teaching. God himself was once as we are now and is an exalted man and sits enthroned in yonder heavens. That is is the great secret. Well, um, that may be his great secret, but that is certainly not Christian. No. You know, it's, it's quite clear, unmistakably clear, that Joseph Smith taught that God is an exalted man. Uh, so he evolved. He had to change. If he was to become God and he, was, and he was once a man, then he had to change from man into God. Right. Okay? So... Mutable versus immutable. Mutable is changing. That's the Mormon uh, uh, teaching. God is a changing being. That Elohim, Elohim once was once a man. Living on another planet. And living on another planet and became a God. Right. Christianity, God was God from everlasting to everlasting. Okay. In, what it, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. That's Christianity. Sure, but that's not Mormonism. No. So what does the Bible say about God changing or, or not changing? Let's put it up on the screen for you. Malachi 3, 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Pretty simple. Yep. Okay? The Bible is implicit with that. Mm -hmm. I'm the Lord, I change not. He is immutable, unchanging in Christianity, but not in Mormonism. Let's look at point number three. 
material versus immaterial. Mormonism believes in a God who is made of flesh and bones. Christianity believes in a God that is spirit. So I'm going to put it up for you. This is right out of the Doctrine and Covenants in Mormonism. The Father has a body of flesh and bones as tangible as man's, the Son also. But the Holy Ghost has not a body of flesh and bones, but is a personage of spirit. Were it not so, the Holy Ghost could not dwell in us. Now, this is Doctrine and Covenants, which is Mormon scripture. They have four books in their canon. This is one of them. The Doctrine and Covenants is one of those books in their canon. So this is Mormon scripture saying that God the Father has a body of flesh and bones just as tangible as Jesus Christ's body of flesh and bones. What does the Bible say? Let's take a look at it. John 4.24 God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So, hello, it's plain and simple. The Bible says God is a spirit. Mormonism teaching say God has a body of flesh and bones. Well, so they are as far apart as the East is from the West. They do it's not just match. just an exalted man. That's all they say. That's right. God is just an exalted just man. Just an exalted man. So let's look at point number four. Point number four is sexual versus asexual. Right. Mormonism believes in a God who must have sexual relations with a female goddess to produce spirit children who eventually will come to an earth and receive mortal bodies, you know, like, you know, we have like mortal ours. bodies on this earth. They right. believe that that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Christianity believes in a God that created heaven and earth and all things that in them are. That's Christian, right. but, but that's not Mormon. We are His creation, not His literal offspring. Okay, right. Mormonism teaches that we are literally the offspring of God. And one of His wives. Okay, and one of His wives. Now, we become His children when we accept Him. That's the Christian teaching. We become His children when we accept Him as Lord and Savior. So let's take a look at what Mormon doctrine says here. Now, this is, out of, this is by Bruce McConkie, um, and this was his doctrinal New Testament commentary. And it says, this is Mormonism, We are the offspring of God. He is our eternal Father. We have also an eternal Mother. There is no such thing as a father without a mother, nor can there be children without parents. We were born as the spirit children of celestial parents long before the foundations of this world were laid. Well, you know what um, that, that brings to mind is when your grandmother passed away um, not very long ago, and we got a. Um, copy of the, the funeral, the little document that was sent to us, and in there it, it talked continually about the fact that she was returning to her mother in heaven. Yeah. It, it's, uh, it, it's such a jumbled up teaching. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what, what does the Bible say? Well, you know what, I don't, I don't have anything to put up for you on the screen to, to show you what the Bible says because the Bible doesn't say anything about us being the offspring of God. We're not. We're His uh, creation. It, it doesn't say anything about God cohabitating with a goddess wife and producing spirit children. The Bible is silent on that. Mm. That teaching is pagan. Right. It, it, there's nothing to in the it Bible. It says in Psalm 139 that He saw our unformed su substance uh, as it was being knit together in our mother's womb. He created us. Mm -hmm. He knew us before, but he didn't produce us with one of his wives. No, nope, that's exactly right. The, the only place that, 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 uh, that you can find this kind of a teaching is in paganism. Right. Uh, the Bible does talk about us uh, becoming God's children. Absolutely. Okay? So let's see what the Bible says in that regard. Okay. Now, this is the John 1.12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Amen. Okay? Amen. That's right. <laughs> now, there, there's a real misnomer out there in Christianity. Uh, you will hear people say, we are all God's children. Well, I, I'm sorry, folks, but biblically, We're that's not. incorrect. Biblically, that's incorrect. Biblically, we are all God's creation. Everybody. We are, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, but as we just had on the screen, which we just showed you, John 1.12 clearly says that 
that when we accept the Messiah, Jesus, okay, as our Savior, then we become the sons or daughters. This is a gender neutral statement, right. okay? That when we accept Him as our Lord and Savior, then we become the sons, daughters of, of God, okay? But when everyone is not God's children. Okay, John 1, 12. And again, I mean, I, you hear this over and over, and I may, you know, somebody out there on the other side of the camera may be saying, you know, you're a knucklehead. Why are you saying that? I, I'm just, the name of this program is Truth Outreach. There is there is not a scripture in the Bible that says we are God's children. No. Well, you can we are His creation. You, when we accept Him as Lord and Savior, then we become well, you can the use, sons of like God. Like what's going on right now in the Muslim community, can't you? They they are not God's children because they are not believers in Jesus Christ. They are His creation. They're His creation, and He loves them and does sure. not want them and to perish. And wants them to become. Exactly, yeah. and that's why we should go and share the gospel Absolutely. of Jesus Christ, the, the, the God of the Bible, Jesus Christ. You know, well, and, and Hal makes a good point. We should share. Absolutely. You know, I mean, Jesus Christ didn't say, y'all come. He yeah. said, go and tell. Absolutely. Okay? And that's the good news. Go tell the good news mm -hmm. of who Jesus Christ is. All and right. him crucified. So, and that's right. <laughs> Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's the gospel that Paul preached um, in, in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 to 4. That's right. Now, let's look at point number five that we went through so far, and that is that God is a polygamist. Again, that's Mormon teaching. Okay? God is a polygamist versus Christianity. God is celibate. Mormonism believes that God is a polygamist. Christianity believes God is celibate. Put up for you on the screen now. This was Mormon apostle Orson Pratt in, in uh, the book The Seer. We have now clearly shown that God the Father had a plurality of wives. If none but gods will be permitted to multiply immortal children, it follows that each god must have one or more wives. Hello, there you go. I know. Uh, you know, I, again, I don't have a biblical reference to put up here to counter that. <laughs> Simply because... The, the, yeah, the Bible is absolutely void of, of, of saying that God is a polygamist or, or you know, that, that whole concept of God being married or that God being a polygamist is, is absolutely foreign to Christianity. Right. You know, it, it's not it's even considered. Been, it's not inferred been. in the Bible. Uh, you know, that idea is purely pagan in its, in its origin. Even the Jews believe. Oh, well, the Jews, yeah, absolutely. They're monotheistic. Absolutely. You know? One God. Now, let's look at point number six. God is a mortal man versus God is immortal. Mormonism believes that God is an exalted man. Mm -hmm. Christianity believes in a God that is immortal. Mm -hmm. So I'll put it up for you. This is uh, out of the history of the church. This is the history of the Mormon church, volume six. Yeah. It is the first principle of the gospel to know for a certainty the character of God and to know that we may converse with him as one man converses with another. And that he was once a man like us, yea, that God himself, the father of us all, dwelt on an earth the same as Jesus Christ himself did, and I will show it from the Bible. Well, there you go. I wonder what you know, Bible that was. And this was Joseph Smith speaking. Okay, this was Joseph Smith who taught this, uh, that, that God uh, once dwelled on an earth, as did Jesus Christ. You know, these are totally foreign teachings from Christianity. What does the Bible say? Psalms 90 verse 2 says, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Amen. No. You know, the Bible clearly refutes that, that whole thing that Mormonism teaches that God is an exalted man and once lived on another planet or whatever. That's just craziness. Mm -hmm. That is not the Christian teaching. You know, Psalms 90 verse 2 we just read clearly says that from everlasting, that means from forever past to forever forward, mm -hmm. He is God. And present. He, and present. He never wasn't God. He is always God. Mm -hmm. He was not a man that evolved to become in God. Okay, so now let's look at point uh, number seven. God is progressive uh, versus God is not progressive, or in other words, omniscient. Okay, omniscient is a primary uh, Christian position. Omniscient means all-knowing. God knows everything, all right? Now, Mormonism believes that God is progressing in knowledge. 
Christianity believes that God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. He's not progressing. He is all-knowing. All right? Omniscience is the third essential or natural attribute of God. And it's, in, in, uh, it's this perfection by which He knows all things. So, uh, what does Mormon doctrine say? And this is out of the Journal of Discourses. It says, God Himself is increasing and progressing in knowledge, power, and dominion, and will do so worlds without end. So, God is increasing. He is increasing in knowledge and power and dominion. Mm -hmm. So, God is progressing. Worlds without end. That means when He gets finished with this world, He'll just go create another world. Yeah. Okay, so what does Organize the... Organize another world. What does the Bible say? In, in Romans 11.33, it says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are His judgments and His ways uh, past finding out. That's wonderful. Uh, God is omniscient. Yes. He is all-knowing. He is all-powerful, but not in Mormonism. Now, you, we've laid out up there on the screen for you today seven different points showing you know between the two you mm -hmm. know very clearly Mormonism teaches this Christianity teaches this and they are as far apart is as it, the east, east is, is from, from the, the west. west now uh, we got, a, we got so about true. a little over a minute here what I'd like to talk about real quick uh, two things one we have we have received a, a lot of really neat emails and letters from folks uh, saying how much they appreciate the program. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that very oh, much. We appreciate that so yeah, much. It's encouraging because to us. Because to get an encouraging word from, from yeah. people is just incredible. Uh -huh. um, and we do thank you very much for those. And uh, I'm not trying to, you know, turn the whining lamp on as we say in the <laughs> Navy, you know, wah, wah, wah. Uh, but for okay. each one of these programs I do, there's some, probably a minimum of 10 hours of research to do a program. So and we do thanks get for the encouragement yeah. because and we, do get know, we work hard to try and give you a good show here and, t and, and show do, you these we things. We do get criticized in this, this uh, you know, society that we have today which says everybody can find their own path to God. We no. do take a lot of Jesus said, I'm the way, the, the truth, and life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. There's only one way to, to the Lord. That's right. Now, the second point, I've got just a couple seconds here. We do seminars at churches, very involved, which break out all of this teaching. So three if we hour, haven't come to your church and, and done a <laughs> seminar on the differences between Christianity and Mormonism, please get in touch with us. Invite us to come because educated Christians won't fall prey to this false religion. Lord bless you.